So I'm off to go and pick up this Volvo uh, C30 that I bought on a buy it now from Mannheim Auctions. So let me tell you a bit more about it. It's a 61 plate turbo diesel, uh, which is in Citroëns, Peugeots, Fords, uh, obviously Volvos, a uh, certain amount of Minis as well. Very, very common diesel engine in its day uh, and very robust. So this is a buy it now on Mannheim. Uh, it was exceptionally cheap. I got this for 1100 so there's a big question mark as to why. But I, knowing that, I bought it uh, in the knowledge that there's plenty of these engines around. If it comes down to it, I could put another engine in it, if it needs it. There was no mechanical report on this uh, bike now, but there are no engine lights on it. Uh, the car seems in good condition in every other way, so we'll just have to wait and see what it's like. What's the risk, isn't it? That's the fun of being a trader. Uh, you make your best guess, and with enough research and uh, enough knowledge, you uh, hopefully make the right choices. Let me tell you about the buy now. So, Mannheim runs their regular auctions uh, all around the country, and any car that goes through probably twice, maybe three times, doesn't sell, doesn't meet its reserve, gets put on a buy now, uh, at the vendor's uh, acceptable purchase price or sales price. So the people uh, who are registered onto Mannheim can uh, just click buy now on the offered vehicle. So I find it quite useful. I'm really busy in the week. Uh, come the weekend, I've got a bit more time. I can sort of sit at my computer and go through the buy now, see what interests me. I like it, it gives me a lot more time to do my homework and uh, basically make a good decision. So that's what I did and I'll now show you the process I went through to choose this particular car. So I'll see you after this. Right, so one of the things, uh, if you can't get to the, the live simulcast auction, a good way, over the weekend anyway, is to go to um, a buy now. So here we go. And search. What I'm going to do here is select some auction centres that are relatively near me. Uh, Colchester's just too far. Uh, Leeds, I don't mind. Uh, those will do. And now I'm going to go to sort by buy now price. And this gives me, um, at the top anyway, so here we've got a BMW 3 Series for a £500 buy now price with a cap clear is £800. And you can basically flick through these and see what you like. The ones I spotted earlier on was this one, which looks kind of too good to be true. It's a Volvo C30. Uh, that engine is the Peugeot HDI engine, which is a solid engine. So they're really good. And this is a buy now price of £1,100, where the cap clean is 2150 Now that's a big gap. Kind of makes it attractive. Service history, well, it's had fairly good recent history, but it looks like the first service was 49,000 miles, which is a bit of a worry. But let's do some other things. So we've got the reg. Let's see, for example, what we buy any car, which was uh, 77.6. Uh, yeah, there you go. And now this is a, a free way of getting a quick valuation. Uh, Fourteen hundred and forty-five pounds, and they're saying a buy now of less than that. So that's interesting. Let's have a look at my Auto Trader account. Let's see what it's worth in the retail world. So I'm going to go to an account. I am go to cars I'm selling, and I've already done this. I've added the information. It's here. Look. So it's basically saying a retail value of that car is fourteen. Sorry, forty-four sixty. It really makes that attractive, doesn't it? 1100 quid. You've got to add three or four hundred pounds of fees uh, and go and get it. But what's wrong with it? A bit suspicious. So let's go to the report. There's no mechanical report. But it's got an MOT till December. So it's just 31st of August today. So well, it's got three months MOT, four months with thereabouts some v5 is present and what else 
Let's have a look at the pictures a bit more in detail. So, it looks a nice car, doesn't it? It's, it's not... Nothing shouting, shouting at me here as a void. Nice interior. Uh, Tarts handbag, red carpets. What we've got here? We've got an airbag light. That is probably the, the handbrake. That probably is for the airbag light. And that's the mileage. The car's running. The engine management light isn't on. So we've got an airbag problem. And apart from that, it's well specced. Heated, heated uh, well, memory seats anyway. Uh, yeah. Leather seats. That's one hell of a parcel shelf, isn't it? Wheels look nice. A couple of stone chips. Uh, oh, it's not. There's a crack in the bumper. Grill's broken. Okay, you can see the crack there. That's been painted and not polished properly. Quarter panel paint flaking. Okay. Bit of curb rash on the wheel. Roof dent. Uh, hole in the carpet. Well, mats won't hide that. So there you go. It looks, it looks like a really nice car. Just difficult, really, to, to see why it's so cheap. So I'm really tempted by this. Uh, I think it's probably it's worth a risk at £1,100. Air conditioning, CD, that means zero road tax. Front parking sensors, rear parking sensors. Sunroof, power driver seat, memory for rear for seat. Rear park assist, Bluetooth hands-free system. Yeah, it's, it's worth a punt. Let's do it before you buy. Yep by Mannheim. Okie dokie, so let's go and uh, pick it up and let's see what we bought. There we are then, this is it. it looks nice. Uh, have a look. There's a bruise there, I didn't spot that on the uh, on the report, but uh, well, I did actually say it was a broken bumper, didn't it? Um, just wasn't very clear on the pictures. Never mind. Well, could be a lot worse. I mean, we didn't pay a lot for it. Let's have a look inside. Right, well, let's see what we've got. Uh, got a V5, two keys, uh, service book. And what's interesting is that the sure check report missed out the early services. So it had a service at 5,600 miles, 13,000 miles, 26. 35, 37, 48, 49, 55, 67 and 70. It's a, and a cam belt change at 70. This just gets better and better. Let's see if it's too hot, say. So, funny old key on the Volvo. Uh, that's a clutch probably. Ooh. That does not sound happy. We've got a misfire. That's why it's cheap. Thought it was looking a bit too good. Oh well, let's get it on. So I made it back okay. Uh, let's just have a look inside. So on tick over, the engine is smooth. It doesn't like to rev. There's a stutter there. It did get better when it warmed up a bit. No engine lights, and if you remember when we uh, saw the quick test report, it had that eye there. Well, that's a washer fluid. This is really nothing more than that. Outside of that, we've got heated seats. They are heated. We've got a sunroof. Uh, the interior is lovely. Uh, it's got Bluetooth music streaming. Uh, start, stop, six speed box, cruise control, uh, it's actually a really nice car. I bought it cheap without a mechanical report. It's actually better than I'd hoped, but obviously we've got a problem with it. So uh, next step, let's find out what's going on.
So then here we are with this uh, Volvo in the workshop and we've got a few uh, results on our investigation what's going on with it. Diagnostic wise I use uh, Autologic. Now Autologic basically this uh, yeah Autologic Diagnostics they're brilliant I've, I've got no affiliation with them but they're brilliant I, I use them all the time if you're a garage definitely look into it because as well as being able to print out a report like this and this is telling me we've got some problems with our injectors we then get phone support from an ex master tech from the relevant uh, manufacturer and this guy has sent me all this information he's saying look the car shows that on the 3rd of July the ECM had a required update and the injector coding was carried out we cannot say if the injector coding was carried out correctly or if the injectors are correct for the car and I've got a load more information here. And I've just got off the phone with him and he said, look, there's a possibility that that has happened to, in, to try to fix this very fault. And in the end, they gave up and put it to the auction. And he said that the chances are cylinder two is faulty and then the other cylinders, the other injectors, my, my mistake, the injectors are trying to compensate for cylinder two being, being, being bad. The result, therefore, for me anyway, the resolution is to take out the injectors, send them off to an, a, a, a workshop I know that is an injector workshop and have them tested. So that's what we're going to do. So this is quite remarkable, actually. What we've done is we've taken the injector out, had it tested and put it back in. I then logged a call with my uh, Autologic Astrotech and they said, uh, this car has got the most up-to-date software. It doesn't need um, reprogramming. What you need to do is to reset adaptations and take it for a drive. And if I did that, well, I basically started up and it's smoking its head off and it really wouldn't rev, it didn't like it. I just kept going with it and uh, I've just done a 15 mile round trip and what a difference. <clears throat> Sounds absolutely fine. I've just done 15 miles down the motorway, drives beautifully now. Yeah, and I've just done a uh, a scan on the car and it's coming up no faults whatsoever so it looks like we've got there it really does well guys it's done let me show you around i'm really pleased with this so we've just got it back from the body shop where we've had this uh, area repaired and had a new grill uh, it's a second hand grill from ebay this car isn't in our design but i've left that badge on um I've also had the wheels refurbished, so now those look amazing. It's a 61 plate car, 2011. So it's 13 years old, and I just think it looks wow. And given what I paid for it, I've got to say, I'm really pleased. Question now is what should I put it up for? Uh, Auto Trader says it's worth four and a half thereabouts. Probably right, isn't it? When, if I put it up for 4,000, I'll make a profit and I'm not being greedy, it'll look attractive in the market. The only downside of this car, as I can see, is it's not Euro 6, which means if you live in Birmingham or central London, you're going to pay a ULES charge. So, but if you don't live in a city with a ULES charge, then there's zero road tax, 50 yards to the gallon, lots of uh, creature comforts. What is there not to like? So tell me what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.